I'm the lighting. Can you guys see me? Should yes. I... Hold on. Let me see if there's more light. Is that a little bit better? Or I don't know. Yes. That's, okay. that's perfect. Um, all right. So. All right. Are you guys ready to cook? <laughs> yes. We're ready. Okay. Awesome. So I'm making my favorite recipe with you guys. I learned about this girl on Instagram. Her name's the Grilled Cheese Social. Her real name's Mackenzie. But um, I found her on Instagram and she was making this pasta and I fell in love with it and I haven't stopped making it since. So it's super easy, you guys. Just take your baking dish and then you're gonna grab your olive oil and we're just gonna, I usually don't measure, but since you guys are here, we're gonna take three tablespoons to start off of our olive oil. Two. Three. Okay. Then I have my washed tomatoes ready to rock and roll here in this bowl. Mm -hmm. um, my husband stole some of these tomatoes. <laughs> it's great to have two, um, if you have two little containers of cherry tomatoes, that's perfect. But I noticed a bunch of mine were missing this morning. <laughs> oh, he stole them like he was, ah, got it. Okay. He must have eaten them. <sighs> But so I don't have as many as I'd like to have. But um, so you're just gonna mix your tomatoes and your olive oil and your baking sheet. Get it all olive oily. Okay, I'm gonna just lift it really quick so you guys can just have a peek. Okay. And then you have your feta cheese, your big block. And you're just going to want to take that and plop it in the middle of your dish, right in the middle of the, your dish filled with tomatoes. Okay. Somebody's saying they love the colors on your walls there. Oh, let's not lose the tomatoes. I know. I'm going to rinse that tomato off, you guys. Um, thank you so much. Okay, that was one tomato. Oh, I lost a couple here. Okay, so now we're just gonna use a little bit of salt and pepper. This looks very easy. It's so easy and it tastes so good that everyone's obsessed with it. Honestly, this recipe went viral. I gained so many followers just because of the amount that people love this recipe. Can you explain real quick, because not all of the, some of these students are computer learning uh, students, but some aren't. Can you explain what going viral means? Yes, okay, I'm just gonna put the last teaspoon of olive oil on top of this feta really quick, you guys, and we're just gonna pop it in the oven and we can have all the chats. Okay. Um, so you wanna just have your tomatoes covered in olive oil, your feta with a little bit of olive oil on top, and then if you have crushed red pepper, just sprinkle a little bit of that on the tippy top of the feta. So before it pops into the oven, I don't know, can you guys see it? Oh, very nice. It's very simple looking. Yes. And it, it becomes incredible. So we're just going to put this in the oven, your 400 degree oven. And then we're going to bake it for 30 minutes. And then we have like plenty of time to, um, you know, heat up the pasta water right now. Oh yeah. And then we literally have all the time to chat because it takes 30 minutes. <laughs> all right. So there we go. I know, honestly, the beauty of this meal is that you have so much free time. Like after you put that together, it takes two seconds and then you have time to do everything you want to do. <laughs> That's great. You can make, you know, do the dishes or clean up or you know, watch a show on TV and yeah. So. I definitely like the whole cleaning up in the middle part because uh, I hate it when my kitchen gets very dirty. And so I, I'm constantly cleaning as I go. Um, so I like that. And then I also like pasta sink, which, you know, I want a clean sink for to, to dump my pasta. Yes, and to have exactly. And hit me in the face, you know, you want right. to... You want the experience to be as nice as possible, so it's nice to clean up. Yes, exactly. Um, so, a uh, couple of questions. Could you, so now we're, are we waiting now, or we, do we have to do something else before we, we start talking? 
I mean, we have plenty of time and that's kind of the beauty of the recipe. So, I mean, there's only one more thing that we have to do, but we can, we can wait. It's not a, it's not a rush. All right. So can you um, do me a favor? Two things. Uh, explain to us uh, a little more in detail now that uh, we had some technical difficulties. Let's like start over a little bit. So can you explain to us what it is you do and what going viral means? Okay. So I do like social media marketing for different um, local companies here in New Jersey. And I do their Instagram and their Facebook page and I build them the community and, you know, give people information and entertain them online, you know, as the brand. <laughs> and then um, I also have my own page, Trader Jolene, where I cook meals and I shop for groceries and I just have a lot of fun just living my regular life. But I've realized that on that page, um, there's actually a lot of opportunities to connect with brands and to make money doing sponsored posts, like if, um, companies send you products in the mail and you share them, you can negotiate agreements where they pay you. And that's the coolest thing ever. I never in my wildest dreams imagined that that was a thing that people could do and that I could do. And See, that's, that's what I love um, about food. There's so, many, there's so many jobs out there that most people don't even know about that are food related or just jobs in general that you never even thought existed. Yeah. So, um, okay, and then now can you tell us what going viral means? Going viral. Um, <laughs> I guess the best way to describe it is you put a piece of content out there and then people keep watching it or, and reposting it themselves. So... Um, it becomes like a big internet sensation. Yes, and to the point where people have just seen it so much that they want... They know it too, and they and then they want to do it. Like when I first started doing Trader Jolene, I thought it was so important to be original all the time and to do original things. But the longer I've done the page, I've realized that people love repetition, and people need to see the same thing over and over again. Oh. And the second I started cooking the same recipes multiple times, people got so interested in them because I think people really? do these things a couple times before they feel like, you know what, I do want to make those ribs, or I do want to try that pasta. That's an interesting point. I always see, and you know, this is this is where I love talking to people who do similar things to what you know my hobby is, which is just taking pictures of food and posting it. Yeah. I try to never make the same thing twice, which you know your your side of it is the complete opposite. You're saying yeah. that people like to see the same thing over and over again. Oh my god, my pasta water is getting hot already. <laughs> nice. But um, yeah, totally. It's so funny because I, I used to think that. I used to think like, you know, I have to be bringing original recipes every single day. But in the truth of reality, I think people really like stories and connecting with people. And then the more they're flipping through stories and getting to know you, if they keep seeing you making something, they want to make it too. And now that I've made this dish so many times, I really do get creative and fun with it. Like, um, you know what? I actually have some pancetta in my fridge. I might pop in there. But um. Ooh pancetta or you could always stick like veggies in there or now my followers have like done so many different things with it they've added shrimp to it they've added chicken to it they've added mushrooms to it and they always like send me pictures of all the variations that's really nice that's I, I like that I like it when um I will post a video for these students on the uh the organization's YouTube page and um and then they'll send me pictures of what they've made um, that, uh, we've done, that I've done like a cooking video on, or, um, last week, I think it was, we made a Panera copycat sandwich, their turkey mm. cheddar apple sandwich. That sounds amazing. And I had two students, yeah, it's really good. I had two students make it with me, which is very nice. Um, so I get it. It feels really good when you have people who, who, uh, like what you do and then send you the results. Cause I, I really oh like God. that. It's so rewarding. Like, um, after I got comfortable making this dish a couple times, I decided to add spicy Italian sausage to it. And oh. the sausage casing was skeeting me out. So I just pushed the sausage out of the casing <laughs> into like little meatballs and I threw away the skin. <laughs> That's, you know what, we, we did that in my, in my cooking class once. I can't remember what we made. Um, Linda, I don't know, Linda's one of my students in here. I don't know if Linda remembers um, and, uh, 
Dominique, if one of you remember, uh, we made something with sausages and we were squeezing the meat out of the out of the, the, the casing of it. I think we were making sausage and peppers. Ooh, and that's my husband's favorite food. It's his birthday tomorrow and he he would love like sausage and peppers with like broccoli rub and like or like oh, roasted yeah. pork, like Yes, so that, um, yeah, that, that squeezing that, uh, that meat out of the casing is just kind of wrong looking. We, we had, a, we had a, a, a very silly moment when, when we were doing that. Um, I think we've done it more than once. But, um, so I had a question about the baked feta part of this. So you're putting cheese in the oven for 40 minutes, you said? 30 minutes. Well, yeah, 30. 40 minutes total, yeah. So... My thought would be, how does it not turn into a pile of mush? Because if you think about putting like a block of cheddar cheese in the oven or something like that, it would turn into melty mush. So yeah. why doesn't this? You know what? I have no idea. The, the texture of the feta is so... Like, you know when you even take crumbly feta and crumble it into your salad, how it gets stuck to your fingers? Yes. And it gets stuck to the spoon a little bit? Like, yes. That works in your favor for when this when you have this feta block, because a lot of my followers who have tried to make this with a crumbled feta have failed miserably, and it turns out disgusting. Really? So you can't make it with crumbled feta. It's got to be the the brick of feta. It's got to be the brick. Like I think you can add crumbled feta on top, or maybe you could like adjust the times and do. But all of my followers that have done it, it's been like those Pinterest fails where they send it to me and it's like a mess. Oh. Very interesting. I wonder why that is. Huh. It must be some, I don't know. And then I bought the Israeli feta the other day from Trader Joe's, which I usually never I get. have that one. That one is amazing. It's it their is. best feta because all their other feta is a little too dry for me. Yes. But that one is perfect. Yes. And you know how moist that one is. It's in a little pool. Yes. So, so okay. guys, when you buy feta cheese, that is like a salty sheep's milk cheese. And... Sometimes when you buy it, it'll be really hard and it won't, it won't be very flavorful. And other times when you buy it, like the one that um, Madeline and I are talking about, Israeli feta from Trader Joe's, it's in a little blue bucket or a little tub and it's soaking in salt water, this brick of feta. And it's got a lot of flavor. First of all, it's made with, uh, I think there's, there's two different types of feta. There's sheep's milk and goat milk. The yes. sheep milk one is much more flavorful and creamy, and it's soaked in brine, so that's salt water. And Jackie says that her dad loves to eat hard cheese. That mm -hmm. is like a crumbly cheese. It's like, oh, it's like cotija cheese. It's like cotija cheese, which is one of my favorites. Uh, your favorite cheese? Cotija, yeah. I like, uh, you know why I like it so much? Uh, the Mexican street corn. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, that's the best. I'm loving roasting corn right now. You're right. That is so good. Yes. We made, in my class, we made up a um, a dish. It was um, the Trader Joe's Mexican street corn mix with uh, chunks of avocado and lime in it. And we used caviar limes. That sounds so good. I'm going to show you my favorite corn seasoning since we're just Ooh. You guys, this seasoning from Trader Joe's, the chili lime. Oh, I bet they would love this. Uh, Benjamin, uh, one of my, uh, my, my boss, he was uh, eating tahini or something the other day like that. Uh, what was he eating? Oh, Lucas. He was eating Lucas. That's right. Oh, yeah, Lucas. Oh, my God. I used to eat so much Lucas. When I used to live in California, and I used to go oh. and get Lucas, and it was the best. <laughs> that's funny. Um, so that's like tahini, though, that chili lime stuff, right? Because I have it, too. Yes, and you know what everyone's obsessed with now for putting on corn? Have you heard of the elote seasoning? Yes, from Trader Joe's. Yes, I didn't buy it because I wasn't that crazy about the elote chips, but everyone says that the elote seasoning is really great on corn, so. Yes, I can't wait. Actually, I just bought some of the Mexican street corn. Guys, the, the, the thing about Trader Joe's, you can see how clearly excited we are about a grocery store. And I know that seems a little strange, but... <laughs> All of you, if you haven't, if you don't shop at Trader Joe's, I think that the grocery store may not be that exciting for you because regular grocery stores are like 15 to 20 aisles and it's, it's a confusing 
thing to do. If you forget something and you're on one end of a store and you've already been through all the aisles, you then have to walk the entire grocery store again just to pick up one thing. Trader Joe's has three aisles, all of them. <laughs> and everything that they have in there is the best of something. They don't... It's basically, it's basically $2.99, right? <laughs> that is the other thing. You would think that Trader Joe's would be very expensive, but everything in there... A dollar ninety nine for food. My entire kitchen is Trader Joe's stuff because I really there's too many options in the regular grocery store, and I don't want seven different types of white corn tortilla chips. It's confusing, and I feel like when I see all of those options, and this is important for all of you to learn. When I see all those options, my first thought, because I'm I've educated myself about food, is that one of these products, at least one has to be hiding something in the food that I probably shouldn't be eating. Like, why do these salty tortilla chips have a, as much sugar as a glass of juice? Or why does this have MSG in it? Or what just it makes you think about your food. Trader Joe's, if you read about them, they, they promise no preservatives. That's why your food uh, in the freezer from Trader Joe's will go bad if you keep it for too long. It, it, does, not, it does not taste good. So I'm sure that these are all the same reasons that you shop at Trader Joe's, right? I mean, oh it's reliable God. and... A million reasons why, but I, as somebody who does um, Instagram and social media, like, I love marketing. I'm a sucker for marketing. And right, yes. Just, They're really good at it. Packaging and, like, you know, people say don't judge a book by its cover. I can't help it. Like, if something has a cute cover or cute packaging and it's two ninety nine, I'm going to give it a try. And Trader Joe's has mastered that. Like... Yes. You know, summer truffle this and watermelon that. And then there's a cute story on the back and they paint a picture. And I'm like, I'm about that. I like that. I'm like, take me away, Trader Joe product. Tell me about this. Whisk me away to where this watermelon jam was created. <laughs> you know what? I, I really get you right now, like on a very deep level. And I only started shopping at Trader Joe's. Like <laughs> it's like three years ago now. And honestly, all of you guys, I can't, um, if you guys just started shopping at Trader Joe's, just the amount of recipes you would you would start to notice that I, all of the ingredients are things you can definitely always get at Trader Joe's, um, because it's it's they make it very simple on you. You don't have to like if you're making soup, um, you don't have to buy a can of beans, an onion. Uh, you know, a container of salad. Like you have, you if you went to the regular grocery store, you would have to buy quite a few ingredients to achieve many of the same things you could do by buying three things at Trader Joe's. Yes, and there's so many cool people that are showing really fun hacks of how to do like really fun, easy meals with Trader Joe's ingredients. I'm gonna show you guys one really fun thing that I want to make. Oh um, yes, one of my friends um, in the Trader Joe world came up with a recipe that she put on TikTok the other day. For this pizza dough. So I bought this pizza dough the other day, uh -huh. already ready to, to be made into pizza. And Fun. everyone was telling me how delicious it is and how amazing it is. And then um, my one friend said that if you take the artichoke dip from Trader Joe's, the creamy artichoke dip, yes. put that on top of this pizza with the Asiago cheese and then put it in a um, cast iron skillet, you get like a delicious personal pan pizza. And I think, you know, you could top that with a little bit of arugula or a little bit of balsamic glaze and, you know. That's, see, that's the, the magic of the, that grocery store. And also, um, I cannot count the amount of times, guys, that I have gone to Ralph's, Albertson's, Food for Less, any regular grocery store, all of them, I'll buy six or seven things it's sixty dollars i don't know how it happens they're not even things i probably needed i probably needed one of them and i end up spending sixty dollars i go to trader joe's i spend sixty dollars and i have food for the entire week because everything is like uh, madeline was saying everything is a dollar ninety nine two ninety nine and uh their their coffee like keurig cups four ninety nine that's that's Guys, let me, let me explain to you. If you go to Target or any regular grocery store and buy a box of Keurig coffee cups, the little cups that you put into the machine, 
it's going to be about $8.99 for a box of 10. If you go to Trader Joe's and get very good coffee in those K, the same K cups for the Keurig coffee machine, it's $4.99. Yeah. Just that amount of money alone that you can save by shopping there. Plus, you're, you're not getting any of the bad stuff that's, that's in that uh, f uh, food companies are trying. Uh, they're hiding in your food, so you're not getting that at Trader Joe's. Yeah, I feel like they make an effort to care about the products that are in the store. I mean, I know, I know that Whole Foods also like is really careful about the brands that they allow in their grocery store, but then you're paying a premium price for all of those products. Um, I have noticed some products have like a different brand consistency. Like if you get ghee from Trader Joe's, the clarified butter, uh -huh. like $2.99, $3.99, ghee at Whole Foods starts at $10.99, you know? Wow. Like you're, but then honestly, I did a taste test between the cheapest ghee at Whole Foods and the Trader Joe's ghee, and the ghee was m remarkably better at um, <laughs> Whole Foods. <laughs> well, then yes, there are going to be some things that you're paying for quality on. I agree. Um, so that's, well, that's why you need to pick and choose. I, I'll go to Trader Joe's. Oh, and then this, this is something that I haven't posted yet, but I'm going to post, but this is like my favorite peanut butter cups. Ooh. But. Guys, do you like peanut butter cups? And these are the real best peanut butter cups. Oh, I don't think I've ever had Justin's peanut the, butter cups. They're, I mean, if you do a blind taste test, it's obvious which one is superior. But you cannot beat the price. These are delicious. It's a giant tub of peanut butter cups, you know? Wow. So Linda had a question real quick. Linda wanted to know what the pizza dough is called. What the what? Oh, oh it just, it's, I think it's, there's only one option of it. Um, it might Trader be. Joe's. So, I mean, I think there might be a gluten-free one, but I haven't seen it on the East Coast. So there should only be one in the case. There is a, an herb dough, a garlic and herb dough that Trader Joe's has, but uh, wow. this, the one that she has is the, is the plain pizza dough. Plain this pizza is dough. like Trader Giotto's on it. Trader Giotto's. I, I yes. don't like that they do that, but I did notice that. I think it's funny. And then Trader Jose for the Mexican food products. Oh I my God. And then there's more of them. And then I just yes. get to a place where I'm just like, I don't feel comfortable with that. <laughs> I think it's funny. There's for the there's Trader Ming's for the some of the Asian dishes. Oh really? Yes. That's I, funny. If you look at some of them, you're just like, um, I don't know. Maybe that was funny like before, but like now right. I feel like people are too woke for that. Like yes, people are are very like enlightened nowadays, and I, yes. I'm very happy about that. It's, and I it's feel nice. like especially the Trader Joe's consumer is like you're a really educated consumer. The yeah. it was kind of built for teachers and for people that you know wanted a different kind of lifestyle but do, could afford you know the products of trader joe's so it was really smart that, that store was like made really intentionally um it has like a smart consumer in mind you know right let me let me just okay oh um all right sorry uh my boss could not get in for some reason i know but. i'm so sorry that's so annoying when that happens I, but it's technology, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's the first time this happened to me. I think, um, I, I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, I'll get it figured out. But, well, you know what, maybe, I feel like now that I'm on my laptop, it's working better than when I had it on my iPhone, but I don't know why. Uh, you know what, uh, our computer learning teacher is in here, he would probably know. But um, uh, anyhow, so so back to, uh, what are some of the, the other big companies you've done uh, stuff for? Collaborations? Yes. Um, I mean, all kinds of companies. I'm going to show you guys something really cool that I saw on the internet. And then I just reached out to the company. I told them I thought it was awesome. I told them I love their products. And then I asked them for one. And then they sent it to me. And I'll, I have it here. Hold on. Okay. There's this giant boom box. Whoa. Filled with snacks. Um. Oh, wow. And they just sent me, like, I mean, like, filled with snacks. Like, in every flavor you could think of. These are called Bada Bean, Bada Bean, Bada Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, this is, this is the neat, the neat kind of, like, one of those things that you can do from home as a job where maybe, maybe you, you aren't 
ready to do it for pay yet, but you can get food and stuff. I, I do these freebie groups all the time. I know Amy does them. Um, I, I sent you guys links to these freebie companies where if you ask nicely and you use uh, the right combination of words, you can do this. Anybody can do this. I was nobody when I started doing this. I just learned how to tell a company, oh, I really love your product. This, you know, I, I would love to try it. And you tell them something like my local grocery store doesn't carry it or something, and they will send you stuff. It's, I mean, I'm sure you feel the way that I do. It's like getting presents in the mail, you know, but, but like, you didn't pay for it. When I was younger, you know, I was a 90s kid, and getting anything in the mail was like the most amazing thing ever. And since growing up, you know, that has completely changed, and mail hasn't been fun in years. But now it's a whole new world because I get packages from companies. And then I decided, you know what, like, what I'm doing really has value, and I really cultivated an amazing audience of people who trust me and not only trust me, but the audience that I have on Trader Jolene, they love to buy new products. They love to try new products. That's, a, that's, a, that's something that a lot of Trader Joe's people have in common. Yes. Like, we see something new and we're like, Ooh, I'll try that sprinkle jingle or whatever P pickle popcorn or pickle hummus. Right. So, um, like brands really find that valuable that my customers are so my, followers are so open to like buying new products so I'm like realizing that that has a lot of value and that you can get paid money to do it and especially now the grocery stores aren't having um sampling anymore there's no more sampling due to you know COVID right it's even more important now for brands to be having people taste and try their products than ever because how are people going to know about them when no one's sampling anymore you know Yes, and that's um, that's another. It leads me to another important topic. Like, um, I don't think this has affected you in any way, but you just did mention one thing. How has the uh, COVID uh, outbreak affected your job? Has made it more important because you're at home sampling things? I mean, I wish that that was the only thing I was getting to be doing. I wish I was getting to be doing more of that. But to be perfectly honest with you, if anything, my client work picked up because my clients who used to work at their jobs had to stop and now they're just on their phones all day watching what I do and right. watching their pages and watching their, they're finally like paying attention to their social media in a way that they really weren't before because it's like their one outlet and voice to their customers while we wait for further instructions. Right. <laughs> if that makes any sense. It so does. So there are guys, there are jobs that, uh, that you can have that, you know, don't it doesn't require you to go out and be in public where you could possibly ex be exposed to this um this virus but um you there are jobs that you can have that are that are actually made like better because of the situations so there are lots of jobs that you can have that aren't affected by this and i mean i think any job has been affected by this i don't think there's any job that hasn't been affected by this i think it's people's ab ability to stay flexible and to shift is that's going to keep them alive. But I've worked with a lot of wellness industry people and they're having a hard time because if you did acupuncture or facials or yoga or something like that, like you can't open in New Jersey. Right. So the only way to like make money, you know, is to sell products to clients, whether that be face care or yoga mats or washa stones. And then in order to do that, you have to engage with the audience and keep it a fun mix of entertainment and selling and information, you know? Yes. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Uh, I think Jackie wants to know, um, what was the first project you worked on with uh, doing all of this stuff? I mean, the first thing I ever did, um, the first thing I ever did was another Trader Joe person contacted me, another Trader Joe account like mine, and she asked me if I wanted to do a giveaway with her. And I was very skeptical because I hadn't really been talking to anybody online <laughs> before. Uh huh. She was like, oh, do you want to give me money, like $10? And then I'll put in $10 and a couple other people will put in $10 and we'll give a gift card away to somebody. Uh huh. And I was like, um, that doesn't seem safe, you know? Right. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it through Venmo. Um, it's $10. Let me just try it. 
And then I did it and it was awesome. I still talk to that girl all the time. We're still friends. And then I got a bunch of followers from it and we gave away like a Trader Joe's gift card, you know, and I, all the girls that I did that with, I'm still really close friends with. And that kind of got me started. And then I learned a lot from other people. And then um, companies started reaching out to me after I got to a certain point. That's really cool. Um, I, uh, I always wanted to win stuff like that. I've, um, I've won things in giveaways before. My favorite knife company is Global Knives. And last two, oh no, two Thanksgivings ago, I entered one of... See, this is another thing, guys. It, there, there's lots of giveaway contests on Instagram for people who do things like Madeline does, where they, to promote their company or the company that they're repping for, yeah. they do a giveaway of some of their product to raise um, followers, awareness for the brand and stuff. So I had, um, uh, my students will know what my knives look like. They're solid pieces of metal with like little black polka dots on the handle. And that's a global knife. Um, I, let's see, two Thanksgivings ago, um, I entered a, a giveaway on Instagram, which all you do is, is like send an at. So like you tag one of your friends in the comments and maybe it was like, say what you're doing for Thanksgiving. And that's all you have to do. I won a hundred dollar knife set, yes. a, a carving fork and a carving knife for Thanksgiving. It was there in two days. Um, they're more than happy to give these things away. And that, you know, probably I'll never ever buy any other knife ever because it of their brand loyalty too. And yes. it creates kind of excitement and you could see how it's very exciting for both parties. Um, yes. And before this, when had you ever won anything that cool ever? Right. I, I actually had, so I actually had some really good luck with winning things. I won like a $500, uh, multivitamin gift basket with a Fitbit and stuff, but that was like five oh years God, ago. I love Fitbit. I, I have a Fitbit. Yes. I think a lot of the, I think a, at least a couple of the students have them too. So um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's the nice thing. You know, we are stuck at home and social media is available to us. And, it, and there's a lot of tie-ins with social media and food. If you have a favorite type of tea, look it up on Instagram and, and write them a nice letter and maybe they'll send you some for free or look for a God, giveaway that they're doing. It is insane. I am overloaded. I have tea popping out of every <laughs> tea companies are crazy. Like I I get a personalized box of tea sent to me every single month by this one company called um Tipsy Tea. And then every single month, it's like personalized with like a cute note and like like really cute teas, like floral teas with all these pretty things. White Linda, are you paying attention? I know you love this stuff. White peach jasmine, like one that like turns into a flower, blooms into the pot. Oh, you have those? Those are amazing. Oh my God. And then I started posting these teas. And then I started tagging the individual companies that make the different teas I showed you. And then they started reaching out to me and then they would own multiple tea companies. So like tips and tea, they own tips and tea, but they also own this Hawaiian tea company. And then they wanted to send me their tea and they sent me a ton, but then they also wanted to send me their other tea. I've never had so much tea in my life. <laughs> <laughs> See guys, this is, this is one of those things that we have so much time right now. And if you find yourself just watching a movie you've already seen before, or you're just sitting there and you don't know what to do, try to figure out how to write a letter uh, that you, you know, let, find your favorite company and write them a letter saying, oh, I really love your food. And right now that I'm stuck at home, I can't go get it at the store. You know, I would, I would love to try sample some of your products. And you can send me the letter and I'll help you uh, fix it up and then we can send it. You can send it to that company. You can adjust it so that you can uh, send it to multiple companies and just see what you end up with in the end. They, they love to give away free things. It's a really fun hobby. I trust. Uh, I hope you guys believe me because it's, uh, it's, it's really nice to get free stuff in the mail. Yeah, and it's like, and like I said, like you're doing a service for the company too because 
they need people to see their product and try their product. And we're living in a world where those things aren't happening the way that they used to. I mean, before people could like put an ad in a magazine and you could say, oh my God, this, these many people are reading Cosmo. These many people are reading Rolling Stone. No right. Reading Cosmo anymore. No one's reading Rolling Stone. Those right. Are, and, and commercials are so expensive and people have Hulu and people have Netflix and every subscription service costs money. So brands have to be really careful with how they're spending money. Marketing budgets got cut a lot and it's better to just, you know, spend less money with these really specific people that have an audience that would buy the product, you know, and make yes. more companies to spend their money with micro influencers than it does, you know, with ABC or NBC or somebody, you know? Right. So my, my, um, my uh, coworker here, uh, Mark Anthony, he's asking if you can explain to the class what tagging is, so like hashtag. Okay. Did you say that he was going to explain or me? No, you. Could you explain what, uh, like, using hashtags is? Oh, I mean, hashtags are kind of just like a way to, you guys, just so you know, I did drop in the pasta water, just not the okay. pasta water, and I did just bump up the heat to 450, and I put it on for 10 more minutes, so it's going to be done in, like, 10 minutes. Okay. But, um, so hashtags are basically, like, um, filing cabinets for your post. Like, it's a way for other people to find them and a place to put them that makes sense. So if I'm making feta pasta, some hashtags that you might want to use are feta, maybe feta pasta, maybe baked, maybe easy recipe, um, maybe Trader Joe's easy recipes or Trader Joe's haul or, you know, you could try to think, you could probably think of a ton of things that would go with the recipe we just made today, right? Right, so basically it's something that you use to like, so if other people are looking, like, where they're like, oh, I'm hungry, it's dinner time, what should I make? I have feta, I have pasta. So they type in a hashtag that says feta or pasta, and it kind of pulls up your recipe, or it's more likely to pull it up, right? Especially if a lot of people are making it or have liked it, um, yes. And especially if you're using hashtags that aren't really oversaturated. Like, if I just used hashtag love with this pasta... <laughs> nobody's gonna find it because billions and billions of people are putting hashtag love on every single post so if it makes sense like that hashtag is really saturated and even though i might love this feta pasta it has nothing to do with it got it <laughs> so that would be like a waste of a hashtag you know it's better to just use like a smaller one um like i mean yeah, like feta is not going to have as much action on it as love, but feta is also more specific to what you're doing. And if you could narrow it down even more, baked feta, um, you can also have fun with it. Like what's for dinner or dinner time or nom, 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 or, you know, yum. Right. But um, yeah, you just don't want to keep using the same ones over and over again because Instagram might think you're a robot or spam or something. So it's good. Really? To Fresh and yes, and try to keep it under 30 every time and don't use the same ones every time. I didn't know that. And I like to, so guys, you know, I love to take pictures of food. I love to post it. I love to learn how to do things. And Instagram, what she's explaining right now, basically boils down to it not just, networking isn't just about talking to other people and saying the right things to them. It's about reaching the right people in the first place. And the way that you do that, if you're on Instagram, I think it's Jackie who uh, just started a photography page. Um, uh, you want to reach the right audience, which is what she's explaining with hashtagging um, and changing them up. You want to basically describe the picture you're posting, but with a little hashtag in front of it. Um, so if it's, you know, if it's if uh, you're at the beach and the sky is blue and the water is blue, you might type in like feeling blue, or you know something, um, something like that. Some I don't know about. Um, I don't really know. Tr the trending does that fit into hashtags and stuff? Yeah, I mean, of course, there's like trending hashtags that you could use, and then sometimes people will just put things that are trending on their page to just hope that it gets seen a lot, like. For example, when Jennifer Lopez did the Super Bowl, a lot of people were just typing Jennifer Lopez Super Bowl on their post, hashtag Jennifer Lopez, oh. hoping that somebody would see their food. Or <laughs> that, see, that's interesting. So you can kind of 
trick the internet in a way to like get yourself seen a little bit more. So if you have a page and you have a picture that you want a lot of people to see, maybe you can put like <laughs> something like Jennifer, the like JLo Super Bowl or, or Donald Trump, I don't, I don't know, you know, election 2020. I mean, you right. could probably put anything I mean, like that. I think, I think that the, I think since Facebook now owns Instagram, Instagram like, is getting more savvy and they're catching more things now that used to slip by the radar. So I don't recommend doing stuff like that. I, I honestly do think that Facebook's been like cracking down on Instagram. And so now if the hashtag don't match, they're just putting down so many rules now that, that you can get trouble or you can get shadow banned or like, Oh, you respond to more than 30 comments. Like you get comment blocked from Instagram. So that's crazy. Yes. So, All right, so just, like, did I just hear the timer go off? Is the food ready? Yes. It um well it has three minutes, but my oven got to four fifty, so that's why the little timer went off. But almost oh, oh okay. We have like three, four minutes left and then it'll be. Ready. So um oh somebody asked, uh let's see, where is it? I think Jackie said uh something about tea uh she loves to drink tea. What's your favorite tea to drink? Oh my god, um, that is so hard. I, I always change teas. I don't think I have a favorite favorite tea. I don't know. Um, What's your favorite flavor of tea? Like chamomile or jasmine? Now that I have these variety boxes, it's changed the game. Like because they're so special. The other day I had like a cookie chai amaretto tea with raspberries in it. Like, wow. Like I, I, I can't, I wouldn't even be telling you the truth if I just said like a tea because there's so much happening. And I like just trying new teas. Like I got this from Trader Joe's, this watermelon black tea. And oh. I haven't tried it yet. But um, I just like tasting different, different teas instead of drink. I don't have like one that I like, but when I'm sick, I do like to have, um, throat coat the throat coat by traditional medicinals when i'm sick <laughs> okay yeah i have um the only my, my favorite tea is very uh asian it's um jasmine orange blossom or something that's mm, yeah that sounds amazing yes that one's very good i get it at uh din tai fung which is a <laughs> michelin rated uh restaurant that's that's right here so we do have a very good dumpling restaurant around here I Let's see what this says. Uh, oh, just trying to mix. Oh my mix. God, look how cute this tea looks. This is called Positivity and it's um sweet tangerine tea. That sounds it's, good. I know, I got a really cute tea that had Albert Einstein on it. It was called Relativity. Oh, that's cute. They get very clever with the tea stuff. I recently um, got some free samples from Cafe De Vida, and one of them was matcha, and I really dislike matcha. It tastes like freshly mown grass to me. It's just, <laughs> I don't really want to drink the front yard, so uh, I, my student Linda, who's in here, Linda, um, Linda loves matcha, so I brought that to her with the mochi cake mix from uh, Trader Joe's. Oh, awesome! Told her how to blend the two together, and she made a very beautiful. Um, mochi, uh, matcha mochi cake. Wow, that sounds really, really cool. It's so funny. I am also not a fan of matcha nor mochi myself. Um, I wish I was. It has this gummy texture that I just can't get on board with for the mochi. And then the matcha is just, you know what? I don't like the flavor of it, but I like that little whisk that people use for matcha. That have you right? The tiny whisk. Here, Lisa has a question. Lisa, did you want to ask your question out loud? Uh, okay. Uh, the one question is, uh, and, uh, what do you use the ends of the 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 if the someone doesn't like tomatoes or is allergic to tomatoes? Oh, I think she's asking. Maybe it's because I'm allergic to tomatoes, and all my students know that. Yeah. So, what's the so the question is uh, what do you do if somebody's allergic to that? You know what? That is a very good question that you asked, Lisa, because a lot of people have allergies to tomatoes, and actually, 
for the last, not this year, but the last two years ago, my husband was severely allergic to all nightshade vegetables. Wow. All nightshades. So for those- Can you explain what nightshade vegetables are real quick? Totally. So nightshade vegetables are tomatoes, peppers, potatoes. Oh my gosh. Oh, eggplant, mm -hmm. goji berries. <laughs> wow. Um, basically all of the good food emojis on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> all of the good emojis, yes. So those are, are carrots also in the nightshade family? You know what? I do not think carrots are, no. Oh, okay. But peppers, but yeah, so that's a lot of different... It's uh, very upsetting. It's very <laughs> it is. But actually, they cause a lot of inflammation. And it's so funny because I don't know if you guys know about like Goop or Goopsters, but like Gwyneth Paltrow has that, that site Goop. And those people are like very health conscious. And a lot of them don't eat like a nightshade vegetables just because they're known to create a ton of inflammation in the body. Like tomatoes aren't, aren't like they make people unhappy in general. <laughs> I feel like it's not just people that are allergic to them. So there probably are better food to stay away from, to be honest with you. I don't know of a... Um, a replacement for tomatoes because when I was cooking for my husband the last years without nightshades, I was making completely different kinds of foods than what I've been making now. So you would probably know better than me. What do you like to replace tomatoes with in like a tomato heavy dish? So I, I actually don't, I don't eat them because I, it just, it's, it causes me to get very sniffly, which is inflammation, uh, respiratory inflammation. And it, to me, it's not worth it. So, yes. but if the food is cooked, if it's cooked tomatoes, I can touch it and I can eat it. I still won't eat it because I don't want to be, you know, that, that just seems like tempting fate. So <laughs> yes, but it's the only nightshade vegetable I'm allergic to. So honestly, um, what I would do if I were making this dish, which I do want to make it, um, what I would do personally is I would uh, eat around the tomatoes. Um, so, and then Sasha has a question. Sasha, do you want to ask your question out loud? You can unmute yourself or I'll unmute you. Go ahead and ask. Yeah, uh, you mentioned earlier about the sheet milk. Uh, where can I get, where can I get it and how does the sheet milk taste? Do you know the answer to this one, Madeline? Um, I mean, I'm sure she, Trader Joe's has a great selection of cheeses. If you guys know, if there's an Aldi around you, they usually have a bunch of good affordable cheese too. I find that it's better to go to like a Trader Joe's or an Aldi to buy cheese rather than a Ralph's or something because you're just going to spend more on right. yes. the cheese there. So but, I do know that um, the difference between a sheep milk and a goat milk I've always thought that one of them tastes a little more like, this is a funny word to say that something tastes like, it's barnyard-y. That's, that's what we, that's what we say. It's a little barnyard-y. Um, creamy than, or less creamy than. So yeah, uh, goat cheese is very creamy. Sheep's milk is a little less creamy. Um, but, uh, one is saltier than the other. You really have to try it for yourself because uh, some people do have a problem with the difference between goat and sheep milk cheese because it's it's one of them is a little like I said barnyardy, which means it's a little funky. Like you can taste like the hay or the I don't know, I I you know what that's the best I can do to describe it, but it's very interesting. Yes, barnyardy. Yeah, no, but I like. I like goat milk a lot. It's smooth, rich, and, and creamy. So you guys, and this is how it looks. Oh. Um, oh, my God. I think you can see it. So now I'm just going to add beautiful. the um, garlic and the um, crushed red pepper. And it basically just cooks in the super, super hot oil. Um, and then we have, we just like pop the tomatoes with our spatula. Can you guys see this? Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, it smells amazing in here. I put a little bit of pancetta in when you guys weren't looking. Oh, I was wondering what that is. Can you explain what pancetta is? It's kind of like bacon-ish. Um, yes. Then, I don't know if it's getting steamy, but then I'm gonna just mix the pasta in with the tomatoes. And this just smells delicious. It tastes delicious. 
And then the, I'm going to add fresh basil at the very end after it's all mixed together. And I cannot tell you guys like how good it is. Even the next day cold, it's like the best pasta salad. Yes. Um, so it, um, does it matter what kind of pasta you use? No, I just like bow ties because I think that they're cute. So. They are cute. <laughs> Let's see. Linda says your spatula is so cool. Oh, thank you. I love cool spatulas. I love all my spatulas are really fun. I have a really funny one that I love. Um, there's another Trader Joe girl named Trader Joe's List, and she made her own spatula. It's this one. It's called Pat the Spatula. Oh, my gosh. That's very cute. It's very fun to cook with it. I love all fun spatulas, but... um, Everyone has their little collection of something. Uh, my collection probably isn't so cute. Mine's knives. <laughs> you, you love knives? Yes. You but the global knives, knives, they're beautiful, knives. so it's very clean looking. Um, so what could you serve with this? Could you do, like, would you do chicken, shrimp? What do you think tastes best? I mean, I love it with sausage, but I mean, since I put a little bit of pancetta in mine, it's perfect and good to go. But after the next day, um, I mean, I'm going to also top this with a little bit of fresh basil, which is going to give it that perfect pop of color. Uh -huh. but the next day I'll probably, when it's cold, I'll serve it with a little bit of fresh arugula and it's really, really nice. The... I mean, and I, like I said, people have made it with chicken, with shrimp, with vegetables. My, my the girl who used to cut my hair back when we could go to the hair salon right. she used with, um, um, asparagus. Like she puts like asparagus in hers and it looks so good. Like with the roasted asparagus. See guys, so you can, you can take something that's very simple like this because this recipe had, let's see, it had feta, it had tomatoes, it had olive oil salt and pepper yes pasta and that's it right there's nothing else in there except the basil you add that's why i like to like have fun with it and like do different things every once in a while because it's and it's, there's so much time in the middle like you can get fun with it you saw how much time we had to just chat and right hang out, like and then even you could you could be like oh my god i forgot to drop the pasta in, and there's still plenty of time <laughs> right and then so the this is so this is a really good dish that so i'm gonna i'm gonna put the when we put this video on youtube i'm going to put the, link the recipe, recipe in the comments yeah or in the description so that you guys can have this basic recipe that you can add anything to like she just said if you're vegetarian add veg more vegetables if you like chicken throw some grilled chicken in there um you know if you want a shrimp i know you guys love seafood oh um Everyone says it's delicious with shrimp. I've heard, heard multiple people tell me to make it with shrimp. And then there are people that have said to do it with goat cheese instead of feta. Oh. But you guys, this is kind of how it looks at the oh, end. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't it? It's like, and I can't tell you, it tastes way better than it looks, I promise you. Because when that fresh garlic hits that hot oil, it cooks instantly with the crushed red pepper. And it, mm, so thank you guys so much for cooking with me today. It was such a pleasure to hang out with you all and to be part of this. Um, Carly, thank you for inviting me today. Of course. Guys, if you want to unmute yourself, ask a question, say something, thank Madeline for coming, whatever, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Oh, and Madeline, thank you for showing up. This is thank very you, exciting. Madeline. Class. Uh, thank you, Madeline. Thank you, Madeline. Um, you oh, should, I mean, it would be great if you could have another class again with Chef Carly Rolda. That'd be really super. Because I would love to invite my other uh, computer students to watch this. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. I think yeah, I love talking about tech and about social media. So, um, oh, if, yeah. if the mixing of two worlds seems like an, an awesome thing, I would definitely be open to that. Oh, my God. It'd be exciting to see another Chef uh, Carly episode of this with you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chef Carly, about the sausages. About yes. The Oh, well, let's talk about that at the end. Hang on. So, wait, well, let's talk about that at the end. Uh, you could, so basically, you can, you can do anything with this. You'll have this recipe. We will see Madeline again, hopefully, if she's not too busy. But really, thank you so much for doing this. I wish I was there eating it with you, Madeline, because... Uh, 
tomatoes would be giving you a reaction, so I'm glad that you're not. I'll keep that in mind. I'll make something nightshade friendly for you next time, Carly, I promise. Oh, thank you. I, you know, I'm not, I, once the tomatoes are roasted, I'm not, uh, I'm, I don't react to them the same way, but, uh, but but this one looks like something I would want to try. Uh, oh. But thank you so very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for and me. Of course, enjoy your pasta that you get to eat now. You guys have a great day. I can't wait to see you all again. Bye. 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 Bye.